What's going on, people? Good late afternoon slash early evening. Hope you are doing well. Want to go over the Wednesday injury report because there are a couple of interesting notes from it. And it's mostly good news, at least on the Seahawks side of things. And honestly, I would probably say on the Tampa Bay side of things as well. Obviously, especially at this point in the season, injuries tell you a lot about how games are going to go. So... Taking a look at the Wednesday injury report, starting with the Seahawks, it's kind of kind of good, right? Like, we had a lot of players, including a couple who we did not have last week, participate in practice. And if you're participating in practice on Wednesday, especially if it's a full participation, you're probably okay. But uh, let's start at the top. The guys who did not participate, uh, Colin Gillespie, He's out for the year, I believe. They've already determined that. He just hasn't officially gone on injured reserve, so he shows up as a did not practice. Um, not a massive loss to this team or anything, but this is a team that already has some issues with their depth at in interior, uh, interior linebacker, so there will need to be a corresponding move in all likelihood, but uh, Gillespie is out for the year, so obviously not practicing. The only other two guys who didn't practice are out with an illness, which uh, I haven't seen any further details on that yet, but uh, that's that's not necessarily something that you would expect to k keep them out for a game in four days. So I'm not too concerned about that yet. We'll see what happens when we get to Friday, but uh, Puna Ford out of practice with an illness and Al Woods as well. Uh, I'd be interested to know what illness it is, but uh, I haven't been able to see anything about that. So for now, I'll assume that that's, that's not that bad. Al Woods isn't even playing that much anyway. Obviously, Puna Ford's playing quite a bit. But uh, yeah, pretty solid. So here's one of the first big ones, and this is really encouraging and it's important. Uh, limited participation was Marquise Goodwin. We didn't have him last week, and that meant Dwayne Eskridge had to play a lot, and he did not anything really with that lot of snaps. So, quite simply, clearly we need Goodwin back. We need three quality receivers so we can access our whole offense, and Marquise Goodwin is that third quality receiver. Uh, as of right now, I can't say that anybody else on this roster is capable. So, him being able to practice some on Wednesday is a very good sign. Tells me he'll probably be able to play come Sunday. Maybe he won't be able to play 100%. Maybe he won't be able to play as much, but he will be able to play. Very valuable, even for this team that uses all these two and three tight end sets. Uh, Ryan Neal, also limited participation. I believe he's going to be okay. Um, I believe he's been popping up on the injury report a little bit uh, every week in recent times. So I think that's totally fine, not worried about that, and everybody else full participant, including the big one, Daryl Taylor. So I was a little concerned about Daryl Taylor when we were kind of not given any details about his injury, when Carol wouldn't go into like a deeper explanation of what it was or how long he would be out. That made me feel like he could be out like a month. But if we only end up missing him basically two games, that's pretty good. So the fact that he's participating fully on Wednesday would kind of make it a surprise if he didn't play. Also, not insignificant, DJ Dallas. Full practice. He got hurt and barely played in that uh, Cardinals game. Also, Penny Hart. Um, not hugely significant, but he has a role on this team. And we need receiver depth right now. Full participant, probably good to go. Obviously, as the weeks go on, we get further and further away from the injuries that Lockett and Metcalf had, so that's good. They're both fully participating in practice. Encouraging sign. Uh, a couple other names popped up on here, but I'm not really concerned about any of them. The only other one of real note might be Joey Blunt, even though he's just a special teamer because he's been out. And the fact that he's fully participating on Wednesday is a very positive sign. So, what I'm trying to say is we're getting pretty healthy here. And maybe a game in Germany is not the best thing for us physically, going on that long flight, playing on an unfamiliar field. I, I don't know. Maybe it's uh, not exactly what a healthy team needs going on. But that's the challenge we have in front of us. And at the very least, 
for the moment, it looks like we're going to be getting a lot of players back this week. We weren't that injured to begin with, but all signs to me are pretty positive looking at this injury report. Uh, going over to Tampa Bay's injury report real quick, uh, they also got some good news. Cameron Brait was a full participant. He suffered a scary-looking injury a uh, few weeks ago. It looked like something that potentially could keep him out for the season, but he's missed a few games. He's back. So Cameron Brait looks like we're going to have to deal with him, which means less Kate Otten. And obviously Kate Otten had a little bit of a coming-out party against the Rams, so... I don't know if that's a huge deal either way, but looks like we're going to have to deal with Cameron Bray. We also had full participation from Antoine Winfield Jr., which I believe is important because with a concussion, you just don't know. But uh, I am definitely encouraged, or they should, excuse me, they should be encouraged by the fact that he is practicing on Wednesday. Mike Evans was limited, but I'm sure he'll play. I'm, it, it seems like Mike Evans is always dealing with something, right? Mike Evans is always injured. He's He just plays through it. It seems like he's never actually, like, in a healthy state. He's always getting his ankle or his arm looked at on the sideline. He just lives in a perpetual state of playing through an injury. Uh, there are some significant uh, potential losses here. Russell Gage and Julio Jones are both out of practice. So that's their receiver depth, right? You got Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and then it's Gage and Julio. So not a whole lot to uh, get excited about with the depth of this Tampa Bay receiver core right now. If those guys can't go, Shaq Mason, starting guard, not in. Luke Godecki, guard, did not practice. And J.J. Russell, who I don't believe is a big participant on that uh, Tampa Bay defense, also out. So not as much good news for Tampa Bay, but getting Cameron right back is significant. We know Brady likes to use tight ends. We know that offense likes to use two tight ends. Well, it looks like with the coming out party of Kate Otten, they might have some options at tight end going forward. So we'll see if that modifies their offense at all. But they may have to anyway because they could be down a couple receivers. So that's about it for the injury report right now. Um, fairly good news for both sides. We'll learn a lot more tomorrow. And, of course, we'll learn a heck of a lot more on Friday. But I just wanted to go over this real quick because it was mostly, for the Seahawks at least, you would say good news, right? Like Goodwin practicing. Taylor practicing, DJ practicing, uh, even Joey Blunt and Penny Hart practicing, significant. And two of the guys who didn't practice, the two guys who didn't practice, didn't practice because of an illness. So I'm not overly concerned about them actually missing the game unless it's, you know, really bad illness. So uh, we'll, we'll continue to monitor that. But uh, good news. It, it looks pretty good to me. So uh, we'll talk more about this Tampa Bay game as we get closer to it. But uh, let me know what you guys think. Go Hawks. And that's your injury report update for the Seahawks Bucks on Sunday.